everybody, Pastor Stephen Anderson here from Faithful Word Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona. So Rick the Reprobate made a response to the video that I made about him leaving that blasphemous comment on my channel a few days ago. And, you know, he spends the first 20 minutes of the video screaming and yelling and calling me names and, and accusing me of everything under the sun. And then the last 20 minutes of the video he spends on the phone with a representative from Apple which is totally not a relevant person to be talking to since the thing in question is his Google account. And the whole time he's talking to her, you can tell she doesn't have the information he's looking for. She can't help him. He keeps trying to feed her this narrative and kind of just get her to say what he wants her to say. But then she flat out admits, you know, he keeps telling her, it's Arizona, right? It's coming from Arizona, right? And then she flat out admits, well, I can't see where it's coming from. So that serial number I gave yeah. you is coming from Arizona? that serial number there uh well i can't necessarily see where exactly it's coming from um if you actually click on your device you should be able to see but he just keeps like trying to get her to say that because he's like well it was a work phone and it was from arizona that's where i got the phone blah 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 you got to cut through all that jazz and just look at the hard evidence that we have here okay because he, he tries to put the wool over your eyes and, and confuse you by coming at you with all these different things. But let's just take the facts. This isn't my word against his. Let's just take the facts here. Okay. The fact is that he shows on the screen a bunch of logins. And he says, this particular login is the one in question. This is the culprit right here. And he points to a login coming in at like 10.15 a.m. Well, here's the problem with that. The comment came in at 5 a.m. Arizona time, 8 a.m. Jacksonville time. He's showing us a login from hours later claiming that, oh, this is the culprit. This is the login. Something that happened several hours after the comment was even left. Folks, the numbers simply don't add up. Okay, look at it for yourself. Uh, so this one is the one in question. This one is the culprit. This is what caused all the problem. Another thing in this video that can be demonstrated to be a lie is that he makes a big deal about having to sign into that Brother Rick account because he rarely uses that account. And so, you know, he signed into it and he just had like all these notifications piled up because, you know, he hadn't been using that account. Because I don't normally use that YouTube account. Yes, I have other YouTube's account and they're not troll accounts. I use other YouTube accounts because it's free to have YouTube read. That way I don't have to listen to, you know, all the garbage commercials and everything. So I just stream YouTube videos online. Uh, so I'm hardly ever on that channel. Um, and then so when I clocked in or signed in, yep, there's notifications. There's all this stuff. Well, again, here are the facts. You can see that he was using that account less than 24 hours before the damning comment was left. Here you can see his retraction comment. And then one day previous, it was actually less than 24 hours previous, he's leaving a comment on Tyler's video. So was that true that he hadn't used that account in a while? He rarely used that account? No, it's a lie. He admits in the video that he has a whole bunch of YouTube accounts because he just keeps getting three month free trials of YouTube Red. So he has a multiplicity of accounts. It makes sense that he was obviously just signed into the wrong account when he left this blasphemous comment. So I have the proof if anyone wants it, I could just send you a picture of me correcting that comment. And if someone looked at that comment and say, hey, you made this blasphemous comment, well, here I am making a, retracting that statement or taking back whoever made that statement and saying, hey, I don't believe that. I didn't make that comment. So which one are you going to believe? And again, in this video, his own words condemn him. Isn't it funny how he says in this video how he went on there and retracted the comment? He took back the comment. Well, you retract and take back things that you actually said. You can't retract something for someone else. He catches himself and tries to change it to that in a sentence that just makes absolutely no sense. Well, here I am making a, retracting that statement or taking back whoever made that statement. Not only that, but he lies about the retraction itself by making it stronger. He says, oh, I said I didn't write that comment. I would never say such a thing. When I said, when I made a comment, I said, yeah, I didn't make that comment. I would never say such a thing. Of course, that's not what he said. He never made the statistically reliable denial 
I didn't write that comment, he gave a very weak denial. And only now that he's been coached by yours truly, does he now make the statement, I didn't write that comment. Okay, which obviously is meaningless now that he's been coached on what to say. Folks, these people can be easily demonstrated to be lying. Look at the facts, look at the hard evidence here. Okay, here's what he said he commented. Here's what the comment actually says, not the same. Not only that, but he still claims that he never went around teaching this doctrine while he was at Faithful Word, even though, again, his own words condemn him when he says, that's the doctrine I was preaching. And the video, he says that I was originally thrown out for spreading, you know, false doctrine. Well, I mean, the doctrine I was preaching, I mean, the doctrine I was preaching, I mean, the doctrine I was preaching, first of all, I wasn't spreading it to anybody. And I stand by that statement and anyone who wants to come to me and stand in my face and said, I heard you say such and such, you're a liar. You are a bold face liar. I will say that to anyone who comes up and says, yeah, Rick Martinez came to me with that doctrine or whatever. Can I tell you the honest truth? Yeah, tell you me can ask Rick Martinez this. I showed it to him and he has showed it to most of the people. I mm. promise you, I promise you, I mm. promise you. You're a liar. You are a bold face liar. And there were many, many witnesses that said that he did approach them with that doctrine. Tyler Baker himself said that he went around teaching everybody this doctrine. But his answer for that is, well, Tyler Baker was lying and Tyler called me and, you know, said he was sorry. <clears throat> but then he also tries to bring out, well, Tyler said that he was going around and spreading all this. You know what? Tyler was man enough to call me up and said, you know what? I apologize for, you know, throwing you under the bus. You know, I was, I was backed in a corner and, you know, that's what came out. And he says, oh man, you know, I was so manly of him to call and apologize. So basically, when you're backed into a corner and you lie and lie about your friends, throw them under the bus, and then you're like, oh man, sorry, I just got so scared. I was peeing my pants. And so, you know, I just, I just said, you did it, Rick. I just blamed you, Rick. I'm really sorry. Will you forgive me, buddy? Oh man, you're such a, you're such a great man. That's so manly. It's very manly. I mean, you can't even make this stuff up, okay? The and it's not you could just say, well, you know, you get in a pinch and you lie to cover your backside. Yeah, but there's one thing when you're lying to cover your backside. Tyler didn't just lie. He said, "I promise you." He said, "I promise on everything." He's like, "Look, I'm going to tell you the honest truth, pastor. I swear to you on everything." Promise, well, I promise on everything. I mean, when you're saying, I promise, I mean, that's intense lying. These people can be demonstrated to be liars. At each point in the video, it can be shown that he's lying. Okay. So this whole song and dance that he does, calling up this Apple lady, showing logins that happen hours and hours later, his own email shows that he only got a foreign device login after he'd already changed his passwords, after this whole thing went down, he can't demonstrate any kind of breach of his security before the comment was left because he's the one who left the comment. He's got a whole bunch of different accounts. He was obviously just signed into the wrong one, whatever. The bottom line is, Rick, you're a reprobate, okay? Rick is a reprobate because he denies the Trinity. He says in his video that someone's belief on the Godhead has nothing to do with salvation. As long as they just believe that the Son of God died on the cross for them, you know, their beliefs on the Godhead don't matter. This is what gets me real mad is when you start saying that your understanding of the Godhead is the gospel. That is not the gospel. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you think, if you are trusting in how you understand the Godhead for salvation, you are not saved. If you are relying where you spend eternity based on how you understand the Godhead, you are not saved. You are not fully relying on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You're relying on your own interpretation of the Bible. How do you come to your own interpretation? Let's see, how do you come to a Orthodox Trinitarian view? How do you come to a oneness view? Or how do you come to a Unitarian view? Or how do you come to a, uh, a polytheistic view or a monotheistic view? You read the Bible. You read the Bible and you base what you believe off what it says. If you say that I have to read the Bible in order to have a proper understanding of the Godhead, in order to have salvation, you're saying believe on Christ 
and read your Bible. Believe on Christ and add Bible study. Believe on Christ and have the proper interpretation of certain verses, and then you're saved. You're wicked. Okay, well, then I guess the Mormons are, are saved then. I guess the Jehovah's Witnesses are saved. Now our belief on the Godhead doesn't matter, huh? Well, this oneness, modalism, heresy that Tyler and Rick and the rest of them teach is just as bad as, you know, what the Mormons would teach or what the Jehovah's Witnesses would teach about the nature of God. Because either way, it's another God, it's another Jesus. It's not the Jesus of the Bible. It's just as blasphemous and heretical. It's just approaching it from a different angle. So again, you don't have to uh, take anybody's word for anything. Look at the evidence. He's wicked. He's a railer. God, I wish he would repent. God, I wish he would repent. God, I wish he would repent.